comments, but I'll be back very soon. Bye-bye. This is where the wave of ambition... 20th series of MasterChef. Watch all this week's episodes now on BBC iPlayer. Good morning. Welcome to a special, special edition of BBC Breakfast. The programme is live this morning from Fenny Compton, the village where 15 years ago the mass campaign for justice in the post office scandal began. Fenny. This morning, some ex sub postmasters have returned to this hall for the very first time. Amazing, and it has changed a little bit, but yeah, 15 years have gone by. Can you believe you know, it's taken this long? But as you can see, I was the only one it was happening to. But nobody else believed you didn't because this post office was telling everybody you did, and you didn't. We're going to put their questions to the post office minister, Kevin Hollingray, who'll join us live. And at the start of a huge week for the public inquiry, we will hear from people in this room about what they want to happen next as their fight for the truth continues. Good morning from Fenny Compton Village Hall in Warwickshire. If you watched the ITV drama, Mr. Bates versus the Post Office, I think more than 10 million of us have done, you will know the significance of this place because this is where Alan Bates first gathered sub-postmasters from across the country to begin their long campaign for justice. And this morning, some of those who are here for that very first meeting have come back for a special edition of breakfast. Some of them have travelled hundreds of miles to be here. Some of them have never told their stories publicly. In fact, some people have never told their stories to their families ever before. Thank you, all of you, for being here. Alan. <laughs> Joe Hamilton is there to meet him. They'd no idea how many would come for the first meeting, but come they did. Hello, Joe. The nice leaders of the post office did with that information. We are deeply concerned that there is growing evidence that there was a cover-up. Victims will be watching. They want accountability too, as well as full and fair compensation. Emma Simpson, BBC News. BBC News. Victims will be watching. Well, these victims will all definitely be watching. Many of them were with Alan Bates in this very hall 15 years ago when he first brought together sub-postmasters from across the country and said, look, something is wrong here. Something's going on. We need to challenge this. We need to fight it. Joe Hamilton, we, we saw you in that piece. Once again, like in the drama, with the cakes in hand. Um, no cakes today. Well, no cakes today. <laughs> we'll find some for you. What, what's it like for all of you to, to be back here together? Well, look at it. We're all the only ones. I mean, it is it literally where the sofa is was where our little circle of chairs was. And um, but what a waste of 15 years and what a waste of millions of pounds. You know, it's it's. But yeah, we're still fighting because it's not over. Can you explain to people who are watching at home this morning the bond between you all here in this room? You know, when you talked about that WhatsApp group winners. Yeah. When do you think you will win? Look, there's too many broken promises, so we'd never have got a date. They, they just tell us something and we all look forward to it, we get excited about it, and then it just goes back down again. Maybe there's a question in there for the post office minister who's going to join us on the sofa in a few minutes' time. All my friends need sorting out, like this year, not next year. Yeah. Waiting for a cake is Gwyn. Uh, Gwyn wrote the Alan Bates versus the Post Office drama for ITV. Congratulations on the huge success. We've just heard this morning Radio Times have made it the, the most influential bit of television of the moment. Um, what was it about this project that you felt so compelled to be a part of? 
I think actually it's because I didn't understand it myself. You know, I'd, I'd read bits and heard bits and seen bits on the telly, but I never I couldn't understand what they were on about. I mean, it just seemed impossible to believe. What do you mean innocent people in my country are being banged up and pursued for money they don't? I just, um, you know, didn't get it. And I kind of came into it hoping to learn for myself what it was that had been going on. And I think probably a lot of people in the audience felt that. Yeah. Like they yeah. heard enough to be have their interest peaked and thought, oh, we'll just turn this on because it might be an easy way to learn about this really important subject. Yeah. And say, oh, I've heard that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, there had been the documentaries and the podcasts and the newspaper articles, but yeah, a day with the two of them in Sunderland, hearing about their story and making a journey they hadn't made for some time. I just love going nothing wrong. No. Nothing. I know I haven't done nothing wrong. I should be all right to be here, and I'm not. You know, I'm not. It's shaky, feeling sick. I couldn't get out though and walk around here. No. Nah. I would never come back again. <laughs> that clapping's for you two. Thank you. Thank you. You're all needed in any. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, I know it was a tough decision to do it, and I hope it wasn't too tough doing it. Now you've done it, and you've told your story to your friends, your family, to the country. How does that feel? Well, it still wouldn't be fully resolved. There have been some successes along the way, but it's still not really sorted. This week, there's going to be uh, a resumption of the uh, public inquiry in London, where Alan's going to be giving evidence. And even in the last few days, there have been all sorts of headlines about tapes and leaks and, and memos that have come to light. We're going to put some questions about that to the minister in just a moment. But let's just talk about some of the stories that have appeared just in the last few days. You've got a question about compensation, haven't you? Um, no, not really. it's not directly about compensation, um, other than, firstly, I'd like to thank you for the help and support you've given me. Um, because you have, and you're, you're one of the only ministers who's actually got a result from me, so I'd like to thank you. 